Okay, Darksiders 3, it's time to put you to bed. I've been playing this game for about a week now, off and on. I've streamed some, I've had some first thoughts kind of shared with you on EP Live. And now I feel like, even though I haven't finished the game, I've thrown in easily 12 hours into this thing. I've met most of the uh, seven deadly sins that you have to hunt down. And I have gotten into a lot of brawls with demons and angels and demonic angels and demonic demons and all kinds of variety of demon and i gotta tell you something kind of like this game i knew you couldn't resist it's got lots and lots of problems and it kind of pisses me off i feel like i'm in a bit of an abusive relationship with the game because it feels like i have to restart my playstation 4 to uh you know stop weird little sound things happening like my speakers start popping it's like what's what's happening here i already had to restart the game from scratch because i reached a point where i couldn't convert to my fire version of fury so i couldn't do a double jump to get up to meet this uh, boss that i was chasing after and it's been a little bit frustrating and even the combat scene sequences annoy the crap out of me sometimes because I can't use the plentiful assortment of healing power-ups that I have in time before I get hacked and slashed because the animation cycle is just too long and I can't run away from these big hulking beasts that have giant claws that are come, come chasing after me and they're relentless and I'm trying to run so I can find a space so I can go and then I could be healed. And I died so many times doing that. It was so frustrating and I would be yelling, what are you doing, stupid game? St I would be so pissed off. I don't want to use all the swear words that I was using, but I was I was using a lot of swear words when I was playing Darksiders 3. And of course, the other major issue that I've already talked about a little bit is the fact that the checkpoints are so far away from where you want to be because you will die inevitably at a boss fight or seconds from a boss fight. And you'll have to go way back and battle through all of the beasties that have come again and you'll have lost some of those health power-ups. Some you could use and some you couldn't use in time. So it's incredibly frustrating. <laughs> The other thing, too, is that so much of this really intricate and cool world that Gunfire Games has built for us looks the same. So you're lost all the time, and there's no map, and all you get is this little sort of skull icon on the little radar line on top of the screen, and so you're chasing after that skull icon, and then it goes, woo! And you're like, okay, I guess I gotta go over there! And then you chase over that way, and then it goes, wow! And it's like, what the f And then you realize that there's some kind of spider web that you have to burn that will drop down a, a chain thing that you can whip your cool whip swing device onto, and then you'll reach this platform that you hadn't noticed because you've run around past it 75 times. Your rage is misplaced, Horseman. So yeah, I got some frustrate. I have some issues with Darksiders 3. It gets right under my skin but it's still damn cool. And even though it's got these problems, I'm digging the mystery and I'm actually digging the kind of old school design decision that Gunfire threw in there to not throw the map in there. I know it's weird. I, I'm missing the map and I like that there's no map. It's a strange kind of relationship I have with this game. I, I don't know what the deal is. As you wish. I also like the combat, and I like that I keep powering up and getting cooler weapons. I've got this lightning rod thing, and I've got this crawl kind of spinny disc thing. I forget what they called it in crawl, but it lops off all kinds of bad guys. You can power it up with your different effects as well, so give it some heat blast so it'll keep burning a bad guy if it hits him. And that whip thing that looks like it's been ripped off right from Soul Calibur is awesome as well. Very deadly combos that you can pull off, and you can augment everything, and then power up your augments. and. You could just become a super badass, but still, you will encounter other super badasses that will beat the crap out of you, and you won't be able to use your health power up in time. And guess what? You're way back at the checkpoint. Be gone. The new issue that I encountered last night is uh, the checkpoint that it sent me back to wasn't even the checkpoint that I was at. It sent me back to a previous checkpoint, and I started running around like, I've been in this warehouse before. I This looks familiar, but this isn't where the bot... Uh, so I had to snake tunnel because that's one they don't have fast travel but they give you all these little snake tunnels that let you sort of whip from uh volgram station to volgram station volgram is the merchant in the game Good evening. and so i after i figured it out after 25 minutes of like wait a minute i've done all of this area before i snake tunneled back to where i was supposed to be and then i found my way back to the boss and instantly killed and all my crap was lost and then started back but you know the routine it's frustrating, and that's on the easiest difficulty level, too. This game is crazy in terms of difficulty spikes. It's like all over the map. Sometimes you feel like a total badass, then one guy will come, whoomp, dead. Back to the checkpoint. But I don't know why I like this thing. I, I feel like the reason why I dig it is that it's kind of retro in its 
graphic style. It's almost like Frank Frazetta. I mean, Joey Madera was the guy that kind of kicked off the whole Darksiders thing to begin with. And I think he was trying to create this Frank Frazetta-like world with the original Darksiders. What I like about it is that it looks like those old games, but it's in, you know, a little bit higher fidelity. Like the resolution is better, even though they're like old textures and old polygons. And I kind of like it. I, I mean, it makes me feel like I'm playing a 360 game or a PlayStation 3 game on PlayStation 4 hardware and everything's been zapped up and it looks a little bit sharper. And I like this kind of, you know, not super high poly, not super high detailed variation on a Frank Fazetta mythology type thing. You know, like I dig these horned demons and these angels with giant wings and huge bells as their weapons. And it's fun. It's it's a cool game. This will be fun for both of us. I just wish that it didn't have all of these problems. There's also rendering issues in the in the build that I've got, which is at 1.03 as I'm reviewing this. You'll pivot the camera around and you'll see on the white sort of pop-in edging that's happening as textures are loading in as you're whipping the camera around. And it's a little disconcerting, you know? Keep your mouth shut for a change. What can I say? I dig this game in spite of all of its flaws and warts, and I don't think it's up to the caliber of the last two games, but I still think it's worth checking out if you loved those last two games like I did. And if you love games like the original God of War titles or Devil May Cry or the Lords of Shadow Castlevania game, it's got that kind of vibe, that hack and slash action arcade gameplay with a little bit of this fantasy depth that's just fun to kind of explore. It's worth hunting down and checking out, but maybe wait a little while is my prescription on Darksiders 3. Farewell for now. <laughs> I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10.